cause of day and night, seasons, etc. Still looking at uh, figure 27, the sun S describes the circle AAA on the 21st of December once in 24 hours. Hence, in that period, day and night occur to every part of the Earth, except within the Arctic Circle. The light of the sun gradually diminishing from S to the Arctic Circle, 1, 2, 3, where it becomes twilight, does so accordingly to the well-known law of radiation, equally in all directions. Hence, the circle, 4, 5, 6, represents the whole extent of the sun's light at any given time. The arc, 4E, is the advancing or morning twilight, and 6E, the receding or evening twilight. To every place underneath a line drawn across the circle through S to N is noon day. It will now be easily understood that as the sun, S, moves in the direction of the arrows, or from right to left, and completes the circle AAA in 24 hours, it will produce in that period morning, noon, evening, and night to all parts of the earth in succession. On referring to the diagram, it will be seen that to England E, the length of the day at this time of the year is the shortest. The amount of light being produced by the arc E, 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 and also that the northern center N remains in darkness. During the whole day revolutions of the sun, the light of which terminates at the arctic circle 1, 2, 3, thus morning, noon, evening, midnight, the shortest days, or the winter season, and the constant or six months darkness at the pole are all part of one general phenomenon. As the sun's path begins now to diminish every day until six months or on the 15th of June, it describes the circles B, B, B. It is evident that the same extent of sunlight will reach over or beyond the North Pole as shown in the following diagram, figure 28. When morning, noon, evening, and night will again occur as before, section 6, figure 1, but the amount of light passing over England, represented by the arc E, 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 is now much larger than when the sun upon the circle A, 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 and represents the longest days, or the summer season, and the constant, or six months, light at the pole. Thus, day and night, long and short days, winter and summer, the long periods of alternate light and darkness at the pole, arise simply from the sun's position in relation to the North Pole. If the Earth is a globe, it is evident that winter and summer, and long and short days, will be of the same character and duration in corresponding latitudes, in the southern as in the northern hemisphere. But we find that in many respects there is a marked difference. For instance, New Zealand, where the latitude is about the same as in England, a remarkable difference exists in the length of day and night. In the Cook's Strait Almanac for 1848, it is stated at Wellington, this is a quote, New Zealand, December 21st, sun, sun rises 4 hours 31 minutes and sets at 7 hours 29 minutes, the day being 14 hours 58 minutes. June 21st, sun rises at 7 hours 29 minutes and sets at 4 hours 31 minutes, the day being 9 hours and 2 minutes. In England, the longest day is the 16, 16 hours 34 minutes and the shortest day is 7 hours, 45 minutes. Thus, the longest day in New Zealand is 1 hour and 36 minutes shorter than the longest day in England. And the shortest day in New Zealand is 1 hour and 17 minutes longer than the shortest day in England. In a recently published pamphlet by W. Swanson, Esquire, Attorney General, the following passage occurs. Quote, Compared with an English summer, that of Auckland is but a little warmer, though much longer, but the nights in New Zealand are always cool and refreshing. These days are one hour shorter in the summer and one hour longer in the winter than in England, or of twilight there is little or none." End quote. From a work also recently published on New Zealand by Arthur S. Thompson, M.D., the following sentences are quoted. Quote, the summer mornings, even in the warmest parts of the colony, are sufficiently fresh to exhilarate without chilling, and the seasons glide imperceptibly into each other. 
The days are an hour shorter at each end of the day in summer, and an hour longer in the winter than in England. A letter from a correspondent in New Zealand dated on Nelson, September 15, 1857, contains the subjoined passages. Quote, Even in summer, people here have no notion of going without fires in the evening. But then, though the days are very warm and sunny, the nights are always cold. For seven months last summer, we had not one day that the sun did not shine as brilliantly as it does in England in the finest day of June. And though it has more power here, the heat is not nearly so oppressive. But then there is not the twilight which you get in England. Here it is light till about eight o'clock, then in a few minutes it becomes too dark to see anything. And the change comes over in almost no time. End quote. Quote, twilight lasts but a short time in so low at altitude as 28 degrees, and no sooner does the sun peep above the horizon that all the gorgeous parade by which he is preceded is shaken off, and he comes in upon in the most abrupt and unceremonious way imaginable. End quote. These various peculiarities could not exist in the southern region if the earth were spherical and moved upon axis and in an orbit around the sun. If the sun is fixed and the earth revolves underneath it, the same phenomenon should exist at the same distance on each side of the equator. But such is not the case. What can operate to cause the twilight in New Zealand to be so much more sudden than it is in England? The southern, quote, hemisphere cannot revolve more rapidly than the northern. The distance round a globe would be the same at 50 degrees south as 50 degrees north. And, as the whole globe would revolve once in 24 hours, the surface of the two places would move underneath the sun, which, with the same velocity, and the light would approach in the, these quotes are from Captain Basil Hall, and the light would approach in the morning and recede in the evening in exactly the same manner. And yet the very contrary is the fact. The twilight in England in summer is slow and gradual, but in New Zealand it is rapid and abrupt a difference which is altogether incompatible with the doctrine of the Earth's rotundity. But the Earth a plane, and it is a simple, quote, matter of course, end quote. Let E in figure 28 represent England and W New Zealand. The radius NE and the consequent circle round N is much less than the radius NW and its consequent circle round the same point. But as a larger circle, radius NW is passed over by the sunlight in the same 24 hours. As the smaller circle, radius NE, the velocity is proportionately greater. The velocity is the space passed over multiplied by the time in passing, and as the space over New Zealand is much greater than the space over England, the velocity of the sunlight must be much greater, and its morning and evening twilight necessarily more, quote, abrupt and unceremonious, end quote. And, therefore, it might be said, with strictly logical accuracy, the Earth is a plane and cannot possibly be a globe. End section 6. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned and we'll see you back next time.